Good morning, everybody. Um, happy solstice. <sighs> happy eclipse. Happy new moon. Happy cancer season. Um, and welcome to Mercury retrograde. To name but a few of the things that are making themselves present for whatever is going to emerge today. I don't quite know. Um, but I'm tuning into something that is, well, I don't know yet. I'm not even going to name it. It just is what it is. Um, so I want to share that with you anyway. <sighs> Where do we start? How are you? I mean, how are you? Um, what's going on in your world? What are you breaking through into? What are you sharing? Where are you collaborating? Uh, what are you feeling? What are you noticing? I'm seeing some huge changes um, and feeling into some huge changes, a lot of which I can't even map to. I don't know where they're going to go and what they're going to be. Um, I've just got to kind of stay with the feeling, you know, it's that stay in the mystery thing. I don't know what it is, but my Aquarian mind wants the answers, wants to figure it out because uh, it's hugely inquisitive. Um, so I'm going to start with my notes because that really helps to ground me and, and focus me so I don't go off in 58,000 different directions. My glasses are steamed up because my hair is wet. <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> Bear with me. Just talk amongst yourselves, my loves. Right, okay, let's do this. So, um, on the uh, 17th of June, let me just turn this glare down a bit. On the 17th of June, Mercury went retro. Um, and today, uh, in UK anyway, is the uh, annular solar eclipse happening in Cancer on the new moon. And I, I'm not really going to speak too much into that. I think I've covered that in my last video. Um, but what I'm sensing into today is differentiation. That's what it's feeling like. It's fit. So I'm going to title this Mercury Retro Differentiate, I think. Um, and I'll tell you what I'm feeling into. So I'm just going to read straight from my notes. I'm also going to stop waffling. You see, my mind is just, it's cosmic traveling. It's having fun. In a time of unity consciousness gluing itself back together, I'm feeling into something quite different. It feels like a time to differentiate, to break from the hive mind, to do, think, feel, speak, move, trust, allow, and be different. That's the challenge, is to be different. It's like creating another sway of energy that really upsets the modus operandi. And that's how I'm feeling it as this crushing wave of energy of differentiation. It feels Uranian, Aquarian, Maverick even, and it seeks no authority to function. It just wants to experiment and explore in a creative time of change. So do you remember a couple of months ago, I started bringing in meaningless joy. It's kind of that with an edge. It's that with intelligence. Um, so if we boil it down to Mercury retro in Cancer, meeting the eclipse in Cancer, I'm not gonna to speak too much into the eclipse because we know what eclipses do. They, <laughs> they suck up to the top, all the muck out of the carburetor, all the stuff we might be hiding from, all the stuff that's gonna set us free. Um, and then some kind of process has to happen where we, you know, move that through us at a cellular level and help that to heal. So I've kind of broken down Mercury into communications, technology and transport. 
and looking at cancer as an entity. Cancer is cardinal water. Cardinal is um, leadership. Um, a cardinal sign leads, um, can be a bit immovable because it knows where it wants to go, um, but it leads and it's a water sign. What does that tell you? With all that water, this is the deep emotion. I think Cancerians are, I don't know many Cancerians, but if I feel into this energy, they have that amazing depth of emotion. And what feels like almost, I use the word gently, almost this responsibility to lead. But don't you see how deep I am? It's that kind of energy. But don't you see how deep I am? I know I hold my cards close to my chest, but don't you see how deep I am? So cancer is the sign of family and home. Um, I named it as kind of this fierce mother energy or mother energy. Um, so that's all kicking around in the system at the moment. And here we go. I'm going to plunge into what came through for me this morning when I was tuning in. Mercury is, is like I say, communications, technology and transport. And the message is, how can you do things differently? Okay. Communication. If we think retro, then we might think about words like review, reframe, reconcile, relinquish, reconsider, reevaluate, reverse, reconstruct, revitalize, all the re words, which are basically our opportunity to just have another look at that. Have another look at that. And then I'm adding cancer in to create an equation of energy. So cancer brings communications home to the family and specifically to mother energy, to how our own mother spoke or speaks to us and how that affects us and indeed how that influences the way we speak to others. And we can look at this a lot of different ways, like when we're hurting, how do we speak to ourselves? Does our emotional center shut down? Are we mean with ourselves, Or do we go into quite a natural loving, nurturing mother where we can wrap our arms around ourselves and take ourselves for a walk or cook ourselves a beautiful meal? All of those ways that imbibe this nurturing, healing energy. And can we feel safe in the care of our internal mother? I think I mentioned this in my last video about, you know, how do we mother ourselves? Okay. Technology. Can I work with technology in a different way? So I tried something the other day and I have a few trusty online readers and messengers where I check dispatches. And I pulled a deck of cards and as they asked the question, so one of my readers is actually a, th a therapist, a psychotherapist, and um, she does some of the most intelligent readings I've, I've ever come across. And she asks these beautiful balancing questions. So when she asks a question, I pull a card and what that does is that brings that home to where does that sit in my field? So I'm using technology, not to just sit and chew on the toffee of watching readers, but to go, well, how does this, so there's collaboration in there. There's bringing our energy into a collective field to work with the same questions or similar questions, because my guides might speak, speak to me differently. And to use the inspiration of communion um, so, uh, so technology, how many, I mean, Zoom crashed, Zoom had a fatal crash, uh, a month ago, was it three or four weeks ago? 
and some big big servers went down in the UK because we've switched um, to Zoom as one of the operating platforms to come together. So here we have technology, um, guilty and blamed and shamed for reinforcing separation and isolation is now become this tool to chat with your family, you know, during lockdown and to meet with friends. Um, so that's kind of really harnessing technology, which we do blame and shame. Um, as this fantastic, wonderful tool. And I don't know about any of you that are connected to your guides and whatever moves you through life, the inner voice or source or whatever. But mine love the internet. They absolutely love the internet. If I can frame ideas and questions to begin with and then hit the internet, I have no idea how I land on half of the sites I land on. No idea. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> And I'm taught concepts I've never even heard of. They absolutely love it. So it's all energy, of course, it's all energy. Now, if I weave cancer into technology, cancer is cardinal water, leadership and emotion. Uh, and I'm gonna share something personal with you, which I've now seen, which I'm now seeing coming through my client field. Um, so using technology might be as simple as getting hooked on a specific something via Netflix that is having um, a healing effect on you. So 2019, um, I met Netflix. I've, I'm, I'm a Netflix baby um, and I love it. And um, I'm kicking through Netflix and um, a suggestion comes up this series called heartland and i'm not kind of i'm not really into um drama series that's with the 3d muggle mind um but i watched the trailer for it and my heart went i want <laughs> okay let's follow this so i started watching heartland and heartland turned out to be this six week equine heart opening i didn't try and understand it i didn't um i knew i couldn't get through an episode without heart opening and some deep healing work there was no thinking well there wouldn't be with equine therapy and just sitting in utter wonderment about oh my crikey how did this come to me how did this find me how is this working through the ether without a without framework contract without an agreement this is just this is something bringing this to me um, on my own behalf um, and I just allowed and allowed and allowed and it did it really opened my heart space so which was a beautiful end to a very tough year I'm now seeing that coming through my client base Chrissy I keep watching this thing on Netflix am I obsessed what if you stay in the mystery of it? And what if you tune into what is this giving me? And what if you become really curious and playful with it? Because it's, it's too easy to go straight to the shaming. TV has been shamed and blamed for so much lethargy and apathy in the world. And yep, yep, I'll accept that. But we're in Mercury retro season, so what else can it be? It can be a, an amazing thing. Um, I remember saying to my daughter a few weeks ago, because um, I too was moving through this, am I watching too much Netflix question? And I said to her, thing is, I said, I can birth universes from under a blanket on a settee watching Netflix. <laughs> a lot of people can. <laughs> I know a lot of people who can do that. So why was I shaming myself? So technology, um, you know, can be a beautiful platform for actually for healing, uh, for bringing people together, for building. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. So it's just looking in a slightly different way, just pointing the mind in a slightly different direction. You go, oh, what about that? Um, so yeah, my latest obsession is Merlin. I can't stop watching. Although I stopped watching it, I came to the end of it yesterday. 
Um, and Merlin has helped me tune into the pentagram and the me rebirthing the pentagram onto my timeline. It's uh, helped me tune into the Triskelion, uh, which is on my grid. This is my that's my solstice grid, which is cooking away nicely. Um, and is kind of rebirthing the magic in me at a time where what I'm reading in the headlines actually is there are magical timelines being rebirthed. People are, I need a haircut. <laughs> People are rebirthing their internal magic. It's coming alive. It's fantastic. So yeah, you'll see me in a, um, a brown cape with a hood. <laughs> carrying a staff, muttering druidic words <laughs> next time you see me. Okay, so yeah, tech and cancer, um, water, healing emotions, bringing people together, mother energy, technology. Transport, I love what they gave me. Transport, think beyond the car. How do you transport a cup of tea from one room to another? Is it carried carefully? Or is it lovingly placed on a tray, maybe with a biscuit or two? In transporting the cuppa to your lips, do you drink, sip, guzzle? And then have no memory of it? Or do you take a moment to admire your beautifully set tray? To sit in the revelry of a moment of real downtime. To relish the senses and savour the taste of your drink. Do you then allow your mind to travel? To wander aimlessly through the cosmos without direction, without a plan? or any expectation of some great revelation happening. In the energy of transport, can you slow down? Which speaks straight into Cancerian energy. Can you slow down? Can you mother yourself? Can you take a minute of absolute purposeless rest, meaningless rest, guiltless, shameless, freedom, rest? Can you do that or is there some narrative kicking off? Is there some part of you that puts a time clock on that? I just have 10 minutes. Because for everything we change, there will be these little mini deaths and I've pulled some cards out from the Isis Oracle. Um, I, I don't think I've ever used this deck with you guys. Um, show you the box in case you likey likey and want to buy it. Um, So the first two cards that came out were um, Portal of Light. She glides on wings through time and space. That's an invitation. Left hand, feminine hand, that is an invitation. Straight from the cosmos, through time and space, straight from the cosmos. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> um, 
somebody's alarm outside. Yeah. So I'm just being told there's been an acceleration of people downloading, regaining access to these more mm, unwanted magical timelines. Okay. So, you know, this, this is an image of a very powerful feminine energy is in us all this is in a feminine is creative magical sensory perception passive so she needs to protect her cubs <laughs> she's very active <laughs> and she's inviting us to come and get come and get come and reclaim your magic Come and reclaim the magical part of you that got squashed, exiled, persecuted, hunted. Mm. I've got this little flutter going on in my solar plexus. Just a little flutter. And with the Portal of Light card comes Flower of Life. <laughs> Want to manifest? <laughs> Divine creativity and manifestation. So what this card is saying to me is it, it's just um, there, there it's like it looks like layer upon layer upon layer. Um, OK, amalgamation of timelines. It's an amalgamation of different kinds of energetic manifestation. So we would call that kinds of magic. Um, yeah it's all there for us it's all there for us so these are two fantastically uh inviting and powerful um playful even cards and then from the bottom of the deck um comes remember what i was saying about every time we change something the old narrative will want to pull us back. Okay, so there'll, there'll always be that little bit of shadow to just turn your head towards and, and bring love to, bring the light to, that you've just brought the light to, to changing. So this is uh, Eye of Horus, um, Awakening Divine Perception. So how else can we talk about divine perception? Would we call that intuition? Would we call that tuning in and trusting? Because the energy that's gonna come in, that's coming in, it's already coming in, there's so much new energy um, coming to be here to be a part of this, um, that I kind of want to say there's just, there's no messing this up. I know that's terribly brave of me. Um, and it's almost nonchalant, isn't it? But I found myself saying to somebody the other day, what if we won? You know, this spiritual war, the imbalance and the captivity of freedom. What if we've won? And the person I was speaking to and I both laughed until we cried so that our whole body energetically responded to something in that. There was a truth in that. And I was talking about tipping point in. 
can't remember. Was it early 2019? I could feel that we were reaching tipping point, um, which has really been attested to by the level of insanity coming from the top uh, and desperation. But that's okay. So I'm being reminded that Mars is about to go into Aries. In a Mercury retrograde. Um, I have, look it up. I can't remember when Mars goes into Aries. I think it's soon, end of June. And well, in a Mercury retrograde, you've got Think carefully about what you say. That's basically the essence, if I were to put it in a nutshell. Think carefully about what you say. So Mars will add fire to any small flame. And as we come into the realization that freedom is there for the taking, I'm talking about emotional freedom, freedom from the structures of the mind that keep us going around and around and around like hamsters on a wheel. That might bring with it the counterpart, shadow counterpart to the realization of the light, okay? Remember the law of polarity, there are no two opposites that cannot be reconciled. So you bring the light of the realization of, oh wow, <laughs> that's me. That part is really me. Did I really do that? Did I really create that in the world? And then the shadow aspect of that, you can't do that. That's booking against the grain. Remember what I'm bringing in today is Uranus, Aquarius, it's higher minded, maverick, on the edge thinking. With Mars fueling Aries, that could recreate the dominion of power over. It's got to be power in. It's got to be holy crikey, Merlin's beard. <laughs> How am I doing this? And am I being loving in it? Am I being gentle in it? Because I'm not always, you know. <laughs> I'm a Sag, heavily into aqua. I'm as blunt as it gets. So I'm not always kind and gentle and loving, but it's someone I want to be. So I have to work at that. Um, I have to borrow heavily from my feminine side. I think I'm quite masculine sometimes. I'm quite feminine sometimes. So proper burial for freedom. Okay. It's almost like an exchange, isn't it? Say goodbye to what you're leaving behind with love and compassion. Okay. Don't get lost in the sorrow of it. Don't get lost in the feeling trapped. Because one, because what I'm seeing coming up for a resurgence, a little quick, I'm back, is that victim martyr. I'm doing all of this, but well, how about you don't? And that's going to throw some people into turmoil. How about you don't? What would it be like if I don't? Well, then I feel guilty and ashamed. Okay, well, deal with that then. You know, they're your gifts. Deal with those. Um, and then, this is the last one I pulled from the bottom of the deck. Isn't that fabulous?
this is all about higher initiation it's all about um, being with learning to be with higher frequencies um, so um, I say so a lot I've really noticed this as I watch my videos back and uh, I want to drop it I struggle with it um, but I don't like so I don't like the word so 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 what <laughs> So, <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, the scenery behind me has changed somewhat. I, um, finally, took the initiative. Um, I was having a chat with a client about getting rid of shoes. And this client is getting rid of a, a beautiful pair of designer shoes. And they were... Uh, telling me about the attachment and da 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 da, da. and uh, and I said I absolutely understand you and that blossomed into a, a little mini conversation about how I've always wanted to create a wall of shoes because I have some stunning shoes that I no longer wear and this client said do it do it don't think about it and as that came out <laughs> I start downloading exactly how this is going to happen. <laughs> looky, looky here. It isn't finished yet. It still has a little way to go. Oops. Sorry. It's difficult on a laptop. I can't just point the camera at it. <laughs> and, as I was doing this, I saw myself in some fancy London boutique, bringing the healing energy of crystals into this commoditized thing, <laughs> somehow bringing loving energy to a huge commodity, which is uh, shoes, well, sex, really. Um, so I have my wall of shoes um, and it makes no sense and there's no purpose in it. Again, this is playtime. It's moving the energy. And as I was building it, I felt into, my mind kept wanting to map into, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? What's the purpose? It has no purpose. I'm playing. Well, have you done all your work? So all that old narrative. Um, so I just kind of took the hand of that voice and invited it to come and play with me. And I had the most amazing afternoon doing this. It was just fantastic fun. Um, and I may never wear these shoes again, but they're fantastic <laughs> shoes. I <laughs> wish I could get my boots in as well, but that's the story for another day. Um, Playtime, it's doing it differently. It's looking in a completely different direction. It's, uh, sitting in your least favorite chair just to experience what that's like it's walking a different path maybe an ugly concrete path instead of the beautiful tree-lined path it's moving really differently really differently breaking stuff to make new stuff okay um so yes i've rejigged my war unit I'm about to do some acutely Uranian. Now, Uranus, as an archetype, is described thus. Uh, wild man, wild woman, mad scientist, rebel of the psyche, ferociously independent, the road less travelled. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm about to... I just said so again. Oh, man. About to do some work with another human being that cannot be defined at the moment and uh, it's thrown me into all kinds of conflict because the why keeps coming up and the over responsibility for their welfare keeps coming up and it isn't my responsibility this is old so in order to rebirth the old i've got to kick its ass and just go i'm coming for you i'm coming for you now so, you know, and it's, it's holding that in this loving, it's okay, let go, you're free now. It's that continual, it's okay now, I've got you. Let go, you're free. Let's go play. It's that kind of energy that will rebirth those old narratives. 
um, that are falling away. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm really nervous about it. But we can't grow if we don't stretch and trigger growing pains, you know. Um, yeah, all I have to go on is a strong hunch. That's all I have to go on. Um, it has no meaning, no purpose. I don't know what the outcome's going to be. I don't know if there'll be an outcome. Um, yeah. And rebirthing my greenhouse into a windy house because I need play space. I need a space outside where I can sit. And I think that is it. I've brought sacred rebels back down. I haven't used these for yonks. So um, can we... Uh, what would you what would you like to share with the collective? What thought? What Sunday afternoon thought would you like to leave with the collective? Okay, it's a message from the divine masculine. Be all that you can be and hold true to your dreams. Never let those dreams fall on the ground to be trodden asunder. Hold with all your heart what it is that heart wants and sings for and longs for. You will get there. Trust and believe. and lay waste to fated consciousness. Make it happen. Thank you. Wow. Wow, that's a first. I'm a bit, I'm a bit moved. I'm a bit moved by that. Thank you. Never had Divine Masculine come in like that. Let's leave these good people with a card, please. Mm. Okay. Lively now. Okay, let's keep this on. Oh, what did I just say? Let go now, you're free. It's mainly us that judges ourselves. Yeah, we're judged by others. Um, that's cheeky. I'm going to say it. But we invite the judgment because we're not fully standing in our power. We're actually asking rather than telling. It's a different energy. It's a totally different energy. Um, yeah, and that is a big move. That might be a, a video for another day is the... Uh, what's it going to look like when we are able to move away from external validation? Free from judgment, free to love. 39, 12, 3, completion. Beautiful. She's just dreaming the consciousness, dreaming the cosmos into her consciousness. At her own pace, on her own terms. Hmm. And that was the second one, wasn't it? Oh, I think that's the message from the masculine. Defend to the end the worthwhile twenty three five change.
So although this looks like a very feminine card, she feels she knows. It's coming in on the 22, which is the master builder, which is quite a masculine number. And what I'm hearing again, I've got the masculine card. This is really exciting. I never, I never <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I didn't expect that this would happen. <laughs> what he's saying is, Yes, she does. And we have to trust that. So he's speaking on behalf of the masculine, it would seem. Oh, wow. She is not enticing him with her outlandish ideas and whimsical fantasies. She is encouraging him to trust. In something that he cannot explain or quantify or reason, she's asking him to trust her. Sounds like this is an invitation for the inner masculine to step up to the plate. Rebirth. Wow. Um, I'm absolutely blessed today. I'm, wow. I'm blown away, actually. I'm blown away. Um, I might go and sit in the garden for a while. I'm actually going to leave you with the love of the masculine today. He has a lot to say. <sighs> and I'm truly blessed. I'll see you all again another day. I'll leave you with my love.